What do you know? Another e-bike. I just want to give a shout out to Hemiway. They sent me this cruiser. We're going to go ahead and check it out. This is going to be a all-terrain fat tire bike. Uh, as you guys know, I use a lot of these bikes on the farm, around the shop, and wherever I go. So we're going to put this one through its paces and see what it's all about. Let's get it out. So as you can see, we got it out, and there's a little bit of assembly here. Not too bad. It's, they're, this is typical for e-bikes. They're mostly assembled. I'm gonna say they're like 75% to 80% assembled. Um, here we've got the seat. We've got the, my light burned out. I got the uh, rear fender here. So we're gonna put that on. And then we'll put the front wheel on, attach the handlebars. Get the charger out, put it on charge. Alright, so here it is, completed, ready to ride. We've got a charge on the battery. We're gonna go ahead and take this home. I love this bell, look at this. It's just really, actually, nice. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's real tactile. It's not like the normal ones where you kind of just spring and hit it. This one springs. Let's get this thing home, and we'll get it out in the countryside. We'll take it for a nice cruise and see how it handles it. All right, so we've got the bike back at the farm. I got my trusty hat, I'm looking right. Got my GoPro set up. So we're gonna do the ride on this now. This is a fully charged battery on the Hemiway Cruiser. Really uh, a pretty decent bike. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this bike was sent to me for review and I'm going to be as honest as possible with what I really think about this bike. Um, we'll start with the features just to, to get it kicked off here. Disc brakes, front and rear, as you can see. I'm always a fan of disc brakes. These are mechanical brakes, though. I do think that it would be a nice upgrade to have hydraulics on this. But at the price point, I'm not going to complain because this bike is still a sub $2,000 bike. Um, and it is full size with all the features that you would want for everyday use. So, uh, as you can see, a really nice rack on the back. I'm into these. I like the utilitarian, uh, concept when it comes to these e-bikes. I think the more you can carry, the better off you are. There's provisions for a basket in the front, which I have on another bike, but, um, Hemiway makes a nice basket to mount on the front of this that will carry a gallon of milk, all kinds of good stuff. So... Uh, leather wrapped grips. I really like these. These feel good in the hand. Again, this is standard on the Hemiway bikes. There's a couple of other models that use these same grips and I do like them. They feel nice on the hand. They cut down on fatigue because they're ergonomic. And uh, the twist throttle, again, preference here. Uh, it depends on what I'm riding, but this can get cumbersome if you're trying to maintain a constant speed all the time without pedaling. If you're pedaling, forget it. Don't use that. You just pedal your way and have fun but um twist grip instead of a thumb so some bikes thumbs just a little easier for maintaining speed uh but in this case we'll see how it does headlight as you can see led really good front suspension this is a big thing on some bikes you're not going to get this especially in this price range front suspension on this fully adjustable as you can see round uh you got your compression uh and uh and stroke on here uh, we've also got fat tires. They're not the super fat tires that you see on some bikes, 
but a decently fat tire. We'll see how it soaks up the terrain. I think it's gonna do fine, especially considered, considering that these are 26 inch wheels. Most of the, the fat bikes that I've been getting lately are 20 inch wheels. So these larger diameter wheels are going to absorb a lot of terrain a lot easier. It makes it easier to pedal on, makes it easier to ride over, a lot more stability that way. Standard Shimano running gear here, as you can see. You've got your 750 watt motor in the back, which is good. Um, everything's programmable and adjustable on the computer here. So you can set up your speed limits and your, uh, pedal assist and things like that. Bell, as you saw, I've got my GPS set up here. So we're going to do max speed, but without further ado, let's get this thing going. Cause I want to see what kind of range we've got on this fully charged battery. We're going to do a 10 mile ride. We'll see what's left on the indicator here, but We'll also see what top speed is. I'm not going to be pedaling. I'm going to be using the throttle only. So let's get going. So I can tell you already, just getting out onto this dirt road, we've had some rain. This road was really torn up. Uh, and it's pretty bumpy. It's, it's actually really bumpy. Riding in a car, you got to go like five miles an hour. But... We're doing pretty good here. The bike is definitely, like I said, sopping up most of this terrain really easily with these big 26 inch tires and uh, and the suspension in the front. Really not too bad at all. You can see we're cruising right at 14 miles per hour. GPS is showing the same, just under 14 miles per hour, I should say. So the speedometer on the bike is about half a mile an hour uh, optimistic. But that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So we'll get out on the road and we'll see how she does it wide open. Okay, so it is speed limited as it was out of the box. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and change that. But you can see 22 miles an hour on the speedometer shows 21 miles per hour GPS. So one mile per hour off. It. In, at that 22 mile an hour speed. So let's stop real quick. And I'm gonna lift the speed limiter and make this a class three bike. <laughs> okay, so we raised up the speed limit. Now, you can't really lift it up too much. Uh, I was only able to get another three miles an hour or so out of it, I think. As you can see, we're hitting 24 miles per hour now uh, on the GPS. And we're showing around 24 to 25 miles an hour on the speedo so it's pretty accurate even at that point but i'm not going to complain i know the bike could probably go faster but that's not what this bike was designed to do so we'll continue using it like this at least you can get a little bit of speed out of it smooth ride one hand no problem it just keeps on going and you can really tell the big wheels are able to take up a lot of that noise on the road. Hidden stop sign. You can really feel those big wheels. One thing that the big wheels do is they create a lot of gyroscopic force. So the stability is way higher as those wheels are turning. It doesn't want to turn as quickly as a smaller wheel bike, but for one hand operation or just for the sake of being able to maintain a nice straight angle, no hands even, it's pretty good. Now we got a lot of wind pushing me to the side but uh so far so good battery meter hasn't even moved all right so we are clocking in i forgot to start this gps right when i left so it's just indicating a little low but right, right at five miles right now and uh everything seems good no no issues have arose this thing rides nice and comfortable super super smooth it lives up to its name it's a cruiser it, it feels very cruiser I would probably suggest maybe something a little more comfy on the seat, uh, if anything, for long distance so far. But 
I haven't gone anywhere near long distance yet, and I'm already saying that. Uh, either way, not too bad. We'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll get back on and go back home. All right, on the way back, let's try some off-road here, just a little off-road section. See how she does on the sand and bumps here. Too shabby. Here's a big bump there. Big bump here. Yeah, it soaks it up really well. You see, we're at full speed, just taking these bumps, no problem. Brakes. You know, the brakes are actually not bad, uh, considering that they're mechanical and not hydraulic. I can see the reasoning. They, you know, at this speed, you really don't need a heavy-duty brake. Having these dual disc brakes is plenty so hydraulic would just be a bonus honestly so I might try to do something here I might try to actually just to see what the top speed on this bike is totally I might try and switch the uh, I might try to trick it by switching the wheel diameter let's see what happens all right here we go Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. We're gonna duck down. We'll see if we can get faster. Twenty-nine. Okay. So twenty-nine miles per hour. This thing almost goes thirty if it has no speed limit. Obviously, that's gonna use more battery, but good to know. I'm going to switch the wheel diameter back now so that we can keep the mileage accurate. But that's good to know that we have a 29 mile per hour top speed. Not bad. Guys, I just saw something. My Floridian eyes just showed me. There's a small alligator right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I promise you there's one there. <laughs> That's the tail right there. Figured I'd show it to you. Everybody always asks when they come to Florida, they want to, first thing you ask me is they want to see an alligator. And they're everywhere out here. But uh, there's a little one for you. There he is. He just went in the water. There's his head. All right. Let's go home. All right. We made it back on the gravel. Not even a problem. I mean, these wheels are really good for loose terrain, loose sand, rocks like that. Let's do a quick lap of the farm here. Tall grass. This is about eight inch grass right now. I need to get the mower out. Go through a little sand pit. Chase the chickens. No problem. Not a problem. There's some mulch over here. We're gonna go through that. No problem. And we're gonna go across the arena, which is like a beach sand. It rained, so it's kinda hard, but it's doing it no problem. No problem. Look at that. Back in the tall grass. So it maintains about a good 13, 14 miles an hour in what I would consider pretty loose terrain. We're back. All right, so here we go, 11 miles on the GPS. There's a little further than that because I started it a little late. Uh, one bar down on the indicator. So this will easily do 30 miles. That's the low end. I would not hesitate to go 30 miles on this bike using only the throttle, full speed the whole time. I would expect probably, if you were pretty uh, light on the throttle, I would expect 40, maybe even more. And uh, we'll test that. We'll, we'll keep on going with this, but really, really impressive range. That's, I think, the takeaway for this bike. Range is key, 24 miles an hour and a top speed of 29, if you take that limiter off. 
But if you stay with the 24 mile per hour uh, uh, limit, which is GPS verified, by the way, um, I would expect 35 miles, maybe even 40, no problem. They advertise 50. I think that's a little optimistic, but I think that if you're really light on the throttle, you could probably get that pretty well. Um, anyway, great bike in this price range. You're under 2000 bucks on these. Um, uh, check out Hemiway. I can't say enough good things. Their bikes are all very nice quality. And this one delivers on that promise as well. A um, couple things that I would consider. Maybe, like I said, a more comfortable seat. It wasn't that bad. But maybe a little more cushion for the uh, older guys. And uh, this is definitely a tall bike. So if you're a short rider, uh, maybe maybe look at some of the other Hemiway options. But if you're over 5'7", five, 5'8", five, this one will work for you for sure. So give it a shot. Check it out. Hopefully you guys like this review. Let me know in the comments what you think. We'll be testing some more. Got my cool hat. If you've got a bike you want me to test, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next one.